Good day. My name is David Weil, and this is the second part of a three-part lecture on Chapter 15 on Organizational Structure, Culture, and Design from Connect Master Management 2.0. Let's begin this part of the lecture by talking about the dimensions of an organization structure. Once managers complete the design of an organizational structure, an understanding of the attributes of the structure is required to evaluate its fit and overall effectiveness. The four major dimensions that organizations use to evaluate the effectiveness of their structure include centralization, formalization, standardization, and complexity. Centralization describes where the decision-making authority rests in the organization. An organizational structure that indicates decision-making and authority are at the top of the hierarchy is considered centralized. In contrast, an organizational structure that encourages managers to delegate authority and decision-making to all levels of the organization is considered decentralized. The major advantage of centralization is that it provides upper-level managers with a large amount of control. The disadvantages of centralization, however, are reduced employee morale due to a lack of motivation, self-confidence, and self-esteem, and top management work overload due to continuously being involved in constant strategic planning and corporate decision-making. Decentralization facilitates flexibility, decreases reaction time to environmental changes, and empowers lower-level and mid-level managers by providing them with the authority and responsibility necessary to make critical decisions without seeking permission from top-level managers. A decentralized structure also significantly increases morale while allowing managers to be held accountable for their decisions. Unfortunately, these advantages come at the expense of upper management's planning, integration, coordination, and control. The next dimension is formalization, which is the degree to which written rules and procedures are utilized to guide employee actions. A formal organization is one in which written rules are extensive, work goals and job descriptions are clearly specified, and violations of these rules are strictly enforced. The major goal of formalization is to standardize operating procedures to such a point that employee behavior becomes predictable and these procedures eventually become second nature. The next dimension is standardization, which is the degree of routine and predictable actions that result from formalization. Employees conform to a given set of rules and procedures so that their behaviors are similar and predictable in many specific situations. Managers gain a high level of control over their employees because their work activities are standardized, thereby making their behaviors predictable. The final dimension of organizational structure is complexity. Complexity is the number of different positions and departments, as well as the number of authority levels in an organization. Organizations that are larger tend to be more complex than smaller firms that do not have as much differentiation. So, in summary on talking about the dimensions of an organization structure, the four dimensions organizations use to evaluate the effectiveness of their structure are centralization, formalization, standardization, and complexity. Centralization describes where the decision-making authority rests within the organization. Formalization is the degree to which written rules and regulations are utilized to guide employee actions. Standardization refers to the degree of routine and predictable actions that result from formalization. And finally, complexity describes the number of different positions and departments as well as the number of authority levels within an organization. Now, let's talk about the organizational structure and the environment. 
In 1961, Burns and Stalker observed several industrial corporations and determined that the external environment and the organization's structure were interrelated. They identified two types of structures that were at opposite ends of the spectrum, namely the mechanistic and the organic organization. The researchers mapped these two structures to the environment in which they were operating. A mechanistic structure is designed to encourage employees to act in a predictable, standardized way. The rules and regulations in the mechanistic organization practically standardize employee behavior to the point where each individual is considered a part of an overall machine. Some characteristics of mechanistic organizations include centralized decision-making at the top of the organization, high levels of formalization that result in many rules, high levels of standardization that lead to predictable employee behaviors, highly specialized, defined tasks that each employee completes by working individually and separately, and finally, a clearly delineated chain of command that extends over many levels in a tall organizational structure. A mechanistic structure is considered to be optimal in environments that are both stable and predictable. On the other hand, an organ organic structure is at the other end of the continuum and is designed to encourage flexibility and the ability to react quickly to changes in an organization's business environment. In rapidly changing environments, an organizational structure must be flexible, flat, and adaptive. Some characteristics of organic organizations include decentralized decision-making, meaning that decisions are made at lower levels of the organization, with an emphasis on reacting quickly to situations that occur in the environment. Low levels of formalization, with very few rules to impede or direct employee behavior because workers must remain flexible. Organic organizations also have low levels of standardization. Employees must be able to react quickly to unique situations and not worry about following formal standard operating procedures. Diverse and undefined tasks where employees accomplish tasks that contribute to the overall organization. And finally, high levels of horizontal communication and focused integration, extremely important features of organic structures, along with the frequent use of task forces and teams throughout the organization. An organic structure is considered optimal when an organization is exposed to high levels of environmental uncertainty. So, in summary on the organizational structure and the environment, a mechanistic structure is designed to encourage employees to act in predictable, standardized ways and to include centralized decision-making at the top of the organization, high levels of formalization that result in many rules, and a clearly delineated chain of command that extends over many levels in the organizational structure. An organic structure is designed to encourage flexibility and includes decentralized decision-making, low levels of formalization, and diverse and undefined tasks. Next, we'll look at the ways to departmentalize. The organizational process that structurally combines jobs and tasks into specific groups or units is called departmentalization. Jobs must be grouped into departments to facilitate coordination and integration. This grouping also affects employees as they must work together to achieve common goals within the department. The most widely used form of departmentalization is by function. In a functional structure, individuals are grouped together based on the similarity of their task. Each of the functions in an organization can become a particular department, and workers performing the function's activities can be grouped into that department. An example of a, an organizational chart by function is provided in Figure 2 from the text, which you see on your screen. 
where the jobs are grouped into human resources, operations, finance, technology, and marketing. The strengths of a functional structure include promoting expertise, economies of scale, efficiency, and achievement of functional goals. The weaknesses of the functional structure include a slow response to environmental uncertainty, foregoing organizational goals for departmental goals, poor communication and cooperation across departments, and a disregard of organizational issues that do not concern the department. Organizations that perform effectively with a strict functional structure tend to have only one or very few products and operate in a relatively stable environment. For organizations that continue to grow and produce a more diversified set of products, a divisional structure by product will better suit their needs. You can see an example of this in Figure 3 from your text, which is provided for you on screen. A divisional product structure is one in which the organization is structured around product groupings. The products that drive the departmentalization are also the organization's outputs. All aspects of a particular product or product line are placed in one division. Within these separate divisions, a set of support functions exist to service each product or product line. The strengths of divisional departmentalization include increased control over outputs, internal divisional cooperation, and environmental responsiveness. In addition, utilizing the divisional structure allows organizations to identify and focus on profitable units while discontinuing non-profitable ones. Some Disadvantages of a product structure include no functional economies of scale, decreased in co coordination and communication between divisions, loyalty to separate divisions instead of to the overall organization, and standardization across product lines becomes virtually impossible. Organizations that tend to perform effectively with a strict divisional culture tend to have large product lines while operating in highly uncertain, unstable environments. The third design method for departmentalizing the organization is by geographic area. An example of such an organization is shown in figure four from your text, which is replicated on screen for you. Specifically, a geographic divisional structure is one in which divisions are organized according to the different areas where the organization operates. This organizational method groups the firm's customers by region of the country or the world. The geographic structure allows the organization to focus on specific customer needs in a particular geographic area. Because the geographic structure is very similar to the divisional product structure, the strengths and weaknesses of the geographic structure mirror those of the divisional product structure. The only difference lies in the specific business unit, that is, the geographical division versus the product division. A final way to departmentalize is by what is known as the matrix structure. An organization employing a matrix structure seeks to overlay two or more of the previously mentioned organizational designs. You can see an example of the matrix structure in figure five from your text, which is shown on screen for your reference. The matrix structure seeks to glean the advantages from the functional structure while maintaining the innovation of a divisional structure. The matrix structure utilizes product teams and task forces extensively to coordinate activities, thereby forcing integration of the organization and allowing it to meet the dual demands of its customers and environment. These structures need to be carefully monitored to maintain their effectiveness. The matrix structure is at best when the organization needs to maximize its human expertise for specific projects by coordinating its functional experts. This structure is, at its worst, however, 
when authority lines become blurred and employees get frustrated with the demands being placed on them by having two separate bosses. Generally, the matrix structure is seen in specific industries such as the aerospace industry and perhaps some others, but very limited use. In summary on the ways to departmentalize, departmentalization is the organizational process that structurally combines jobs and tasks into specific groups or units. The most accepted types of departmentalization are functional structure where individuals are grouped together based on the similarity of their task and divisional structures where individuals are grouped by the types of products produced by the organization or by geographic region. Finally, a matrix structure uses both a functional and a divisional structure within the same part of the organization. And with that, we end the second part of our three-part lecture on organizational structure, culture, and design.